Flash Forge wanted me to check out their latest filament printer and I was happy to oblige. During the unboxing, I noticed this particular printer comes with the usual accessories. It has the 3D printing adhesive, comes with some grease, you also get some tools that are necessary to assemble with it, and uh, a pair of sidecars there to cut the filament. Talking about filament, you get some sample pieces as well, just to get you started. And this pack, you get a variety of colours. The power cable is a kettle lead. The first part of the assembly that needs to be done is the removal of this plate, because right behind that is a 4.3 inch touchscreen. That unit is recessed into the foam just to keep it safe during travel. There's a couple of hooks there and they just slide into the slots there, push it right in, get the angle right there and just push it to your left to lock it into place. That is temporary as we'll get to it a little bit later. In this well packed foam compartment is the filament feed system. And this little unit gives you the ability to automatically switch between filament colours. In that section, you get the filament sample as well as the tubes that go from the feeder to the hothead. That is the four colour module. This is the IFS connection cable. And you get the four spindles to hold the filament. These spindles are numbered from one to four to match up with the hooks that are on the side of the 3D printer. These filament spool holders look very sturdy and they feel quite well made. This is the mounting plate for the four color module, which is the IFS system. Flash Forge also sent me this enclosure kit for the printer. In the box is just about everything you need to assemble this uh, enclosure. These are the acrylic sides and there's four small ones and four larger ones, top and bottom. Some magnets there for the door latch. And you get a whole bunch of very sized screws and little bolts uh, to put that enclosure together. And of course, for that you're gonna need some tools as well and they're provided as you can see there. The smaller acrylic pieces go towards the top of the enclosure and the larger ones are at the bottom. These pieces are really nicely cut out and have a protective film on both sides of the acrylic sheet. To be more precise, there are seven sides plus one acrylic door. When I said earlier you almost get everything you need, this is what you don't get. This is the frame for the enclosure and you do need to 3D print these and it'll take up a whole roll or a whole kilo of filament. The files are available free from their website. This almost took me two days to print up. And there are two pieces to each side. This is uh, part of the top and there's four pieces in that. They're the hinges and they just print straight on the plate. This is just a little protective surround for the hole where the IFS system cables go through. That's the top hatch knob. Off camera, I screwed on a couple of these hinges onto two of the frame pieces. Now I'm not gonna get into too much detail right here about the assembly of this frame, mainly because Flash Forge have a great video on their YouTube channel. And I'll leave a link in the description for you. They go into great detail on how to assemble this frame, what uh, size screws to use, and where all the pieces go. I don't know why Flash Forge decided to go down this route, but here we are. You will need to remove the touchscreen to put on one of those pieces. Be careful when you do this so you don't rip out the LCD ribbon. My biggest gripe with this frame, other than you have to print it yourself, is just the sheer quality of the um, design file. You can see the vertical ridges in that frame. But remember, this is an add-on, you don't have to buy it. I super glued a couple of those little magnets and this is the plate that goes behind the touchscreen. This took a couple goes for me to get that plate in. What I ended up doing was sliding that ribbon through that slot there, then on the left hand side lifting that up on an angle. I then slid the right hand tab into the slot, lift up the left hand side and just pushed it down and that popped everything in. And came out to be really sturdy. If you look closely you will notice there's a USB port on the right hand side of that touchscreen. 
the acrylic sheets have pre-cut holes in them don't worry about them because they don't align they're obviously designed to suit other printers so I rip off the protective film off both sides of that sheet then the sheet slides straight into the slots of that frame off camera I attach the door latch and that's just a couple of screws and also with a couple of magnets uh, subglued into place there are four of these pieces and they are the shorter tops that screw on each corner of the frame I gotta admit as rough as the frame looked everything came together really nicely two screws to hold those top sections in and with all the vertical pieces screwed into place it's actually quite sturdy there's that little surround that I mentioned earlier and that just slotted straight into that um, acrylic piece it just pops in clips into place again slide it in because of the thickness of the frame you also need to print up that extender for the mounting plate now make sure when you screw this on that the spindle goes to the top the four color module then just clips into place and that's just a matter of putting it on on an angle and then twisting it in and that locks it the four in one guide tubes are then fed through that slot and it's a matter of then hooking up to the unit doesn't matter which order they go in it works itself out and the other end of the guide tube goes straight into the hot end and then you can just clip the power cable to those feed tubes once that's all in place we can then add the top frame to the rest of the frame section and again that just clips into place and you can put a couple screws in each corner and then the little hatch goes straight on top this next bit is very important you need to get the sequence correct the first spool holder goes on to number one which is the top left hand side number two then is the bottom left hand side number three goes to the bottom right hand side and finally number four goes to the top right hand side and this is very important because this is how you work out which color is allocated to which number and finally for the IFS system we use this connection cable and the first end goes to the back of the printer and the other end goes into the full color module it doesn't matter which end of the cable you use they're exactly the same we have one more very important job to do and on each side of the build plate are two bolts and also one at the back of the build plate so a total of three they need to come out after all that what is the printer that flash forge sent me well viewers it's the AD5X multicolor high-speed printer this is a whiz-bang little printer it's got some fantastic specs to it it has a magnetic print bed which is pretty standard these days it has a print speed of 600 millimeters per second which I'll be really keen to see how well that works and a variety of different ways to send the files to the machine this machine has a build area of 220 millimeters square and it comes with this PEI flexible steel sheet now with the machine and the accessory frame all assembled it's time to do a bit of our setup with the software we need to plug in the power with the kettle lead switch it on and we're off into the setup process now this process takes less than 10 minutes first thing we do is select the language and by default it's English on my machine then we have just got to confirm everything that we've done switch on the Wi-Fi and of course I'm not going to show you what my Wi-Fi details are that's my network right at the top there and you can see it's already connected so it's all good you can move ahead if you want to bind it to a phone you scan that QR code and now the printer will automatically calibrate itself if you don't use the add-on enclosure system literally this whole setup takes roughly about 10 minutes to do it's very quick and so far really easy and if you've been following my uh, review videos you'll know one of the most important things for me is how easy it is to use the machine remember the importance of those allocation of the numbers to the color spools well this is the reason we did we need to now match up the filament types to the uh, printer spools and the machine the filament I'm using on all the spools is PLA and then I input the colors that I have first one is white then we OK that then we click on the second spool hit the edit button then again the filament type again is PLA and also the color which will be gray and I did that for the other two colors blue and red as well now it's time to do our very first test print and of course 
I'm going to do the 3D Benchy. Now this is a multicolored one, so we need to add the colors that we're going to use. So for the first uh, PLA spool, I'm going to use white. Then the second one, I'm going to use gray. And then I'll allocate the other two colors to the other spools. I'm actually only going to print the Benchy in the white and the gray in this particular test. It's going to take about 50 minutes to do. First thing it does, it raises the bill plate to the hot end. Once it gets to the top, it will then heat up the nozzle as well as the build plate. The plate and the nozzle then heats up to the correct temperature, then it does an auto level and then it starts printing the Benchy. The speed of this looks really good and it's right up there with the Bamboo Labs A1. The speed is quite exceptional on this unit. The great thing about this unit so far is I haven't had to do any manual calibration. The whole thing has been automated by FlashForge. Let's check out the results. And there it is, HMS 3D Benchy. The lines are really smooth and the gradient between the two colors is really, really nice. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The gray and white filament I'm using for this particular test is the Creality Ender PLA filament. And like I said, that was automatically set up for me. Look at those really nice lines there. First test done and dusted, let's do something from the software. Now you need to download the software from their website, which is Orca. And that's a variation of what Bamboo Labs uses. So if you've used that software, you'll fit straight into this one. If you haven't already, you will need to register an account, but if you have one, you can then log in. Yeah, and of course, just like all software, you have to agree to the T's and C's. We're all logged in, so let's head over to a brand new project, which is right in the middle there. Click onto that, and then we get into the interface. Now, what we need to do is then bind the machine with the software. Now, normally that um, icon doesn't appear first up. What you need to do is head over to that plus sign. You can then click on the machine because you've already logged in because it recognizes that you have that machine. Click on it, and it'll bring up all those details and it automatically sets it up for you. So let's print a model. Let's go in, import a STL file, and this is my little dragon lizardy thing. And it's one of those articulated little models. So this is gonna be my test print. So you can see it's quite a large little piece there. The head is in two pieces and it has a little spring in there. So the jaws kind of chatter up and down. So on the left hand side, you can see under filament, all I'm using there is the Flash Forge PLA mat. Just a standard one, nothing special. Again, I didn't calibrate anything. Now with the strength, I'm just gonna leave it at the default of 15%. And for the support, I'm gonna have that on tree auto. And that automatically works out where I need to have trees amongst the little model. And mainly it's the center section, the jaws don't need it. I then hit slice and that calculates what the model needs to look like and creates the g-code to send to the printer. Now you can see the little raft it's created and there's some ports right in the middle there. It's telling me, like I said, it takes me about seven hours and 22 minutes to print. And then I hit print to actually print the model. Now, of course, I need to select the filament that I'm using. In this case, I'm gonna go for the red. Now the red is from King Groon. And I've had this filament sitting around for years and years and years, and I've just never got around to using it. Hit the send button, and it's gonna use 123 grams of filament. And it's now preparing the file, and it's gonna send it straight to the printer. Now this process usually takes about a minute, maybe almost one and a half minutes to do. Now I've set this up so I automatically level the plate. During this wait process in the software, it's actually raising the plate to the hot end. It then heats up the components and levels out the plate and the print job starts. One of the pre-print tests that this AD5X does before it actually starts printing is a vibration test. During that process, this particular unit hardly had any vibration in the actual cabinet where the Bamboo Labs A1 vibrated the whole table. It was bonkers. Full disclosure, I did do this test print overnight in a very cold, unheated room. 
The print came up really nice, really happy with the way this looks. The springs in the jaws work really, really well. A lot of articulation in the body. I do have some layer lines in there. That's because I was using a four millimeter nozzle. If I went to a two millimeter, I'd probably get a lot better results on this particular uh, printout. And again, considering this whole thing was automatically set up, this printout is a ripper. Pros and cons. The cons, I hate the fact that the uh, poop chute is right at the back. So it shoots it out and I have to have this little tray at the back to capture it all. Not a fan of that. And also, if you're a follower of my channel, you know how much I hate switches on the back of machines. And of course, that plastic tray covers it. And finally, that horrible looking frame. Good news is, if you don't put it on, the machine looks absolutely fantastic. With that out the way, let's talk about some of the great features of this machine. There have been quite a number of people out there asking, is this AD5X the Bamboo Labs A1 killer? I don't think it is. I think it's quite on par with the A1. The advantage the AD5X has is its footprint. This machine uses half the footprint of what the A1 does. The automatic color changing of the filament system works just as well on both machines. And the speeds of each machine seem to be the same. They both have a fairly easy way of changing the hot end. A1 has a clip system and the AD5X uses a couple of screws. In a future video, I will be doing a build that incorporates this printer. So I'll be doing some really fine work and see how that goes. I personally think the Flash Forge AD5X is a better machine for the value. At the moment, it's cheaper than the Bamboo Labs version and it gives you the same quality. So, <laughs> on that note, why don't you go and check out the affiliate link that I have in the description and you might get yourself a great deal on this very cool Flash Forge printer.